Welcome to the October 17th Hampton Municipal Budget Committee meeting. My name is my name is Stephen LeBranch. I'm the chairman. Um, could you please introduce yourselves, members, We're starting with Ginny Bridal? Ginny Bridal, uh, school board representative. Tony Kravitz. Brian Lapham. Steve Henderson. Blake Wolf. Danielle Augustine. Jones. Bob uh, Mad, precinct representative. David Moore. And we have our Secretary, uh, recording secretary Barbara Kravitz with us as well. Thank you. Uh, Regina Barnes couldn't make it tonight, so she's excused. So, let me see. The next thing on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from September 19th. I hope that you have a copy of those minutes. And does anybody have? change on page one. Page two. Page three. I'll entertain a motion. To accept to accept yeah. the minutes as printed. Moved. I'll second it. Okay. Moved by Mike Clough, seconded by Brian Lapham. Thank you very much. Okay. Now Christina sent out the proposed budget committee schedule for 2017-2018. I hope that everybody perhaps looked at it, printed it out, took a look at it. Um, no. Okay. The um, Mr. Chen. Yes, sir. Did we uh, in the email that we were sent the agenda? Included the March minutes. Passing from the March minutes. Are we going to address those? March 21st for me? Yeah. They were already approved, but I didn't see them on the uh, web page. On the website. So, so you resent them? I think it was just resending it. Okay. Also, uh, there's a vote on the approval of uh, last month's minutes, was? Oh, I'm sorry. We had a motion and a second. I have a statement I want to make on that. Go ahead, please. <clears throat> I, I read through the, the minutes with care, uh, particularly with regard to my understanding that we had by consents, consensus established certain rules relative to procedures. None of those were in the minutes. So I do not believe the minutes as put forth reflect the essence of the meeting. We will not be able to support these minutes. I can get into detail if you wish. Um, please continue. Well, I'll just be detailed. I mean, we discussed, for example, that um, based on Dave Moore's uh, suggestion that we address the voting on lines and how they don't have any meaning because we're revoting them later. So we decided, well, they will have meaning initially, but every member, regardless of how they voted, reserves the right to move to reconsider up until before the public hearing. Mm -hmm. That's not in the minutes. We also agreed that we'd be voting only on line items, not subline items, not subtotals, not grand totals. Also not in the minutes. Okay. You also had made the statement that we don't need to capture the rules in writing as Mr. Moore had suggested because the minutes would be sufficient. Mm -hmm. That's true. They're clearly not sufficient. Everything that you say is true. And there are a few others relative to procedural stuff that we, I thought, decided by consensus, which are not in there. So I would like the minutes to be revisited uh, by reviewing the video. Okay. That would be my suggestion. Barbara, could you look through the video and address what Tim is talking about and perhaps send us a revised version of these minutes and briefly... Um, right the very things that Tim is talking about if that's the sense of the committee I'm happy to do that it's basically I think that, what I've done before well since Tim is making a good point and since I when David Mora specifically said should we write this down and I remember saying to him we have a video and it will be reflected in the minutes 
Okay. So I think that perhaps you could revisit that, please. And for that reason, I think that we should wait um, on these minutes until next month, please. So um, would you withdraw your Brother, motion? motion? Okay. Brian, you, Brian, withdraw the second? No. Is that a no? You can't withdraw a second if the motion has been withdrawn. Thank yeah. you. Down there. We're all set. Yeah. Okay. Hold for next month. Yep. I'm sorry. Are you withdrawing the motion? Is that what's... Yeah. Yes. So we're withdrawing the motion because it needs to be... You need to revisit the... the uh, I have a question. Yes, sir. If I recall the discussion insisted that we wanted to do this in five days, am I correct? And so she submitted the bare bones. In the past, you saw the way she was doing the minutes. You said you didn't want it that way. Or maybe the committee wants it that way. Um, let's, in this case, <clears throat> Let's add what Mr. Jones has requested, okay? And that'll be the min that'll be the maximum that needs to be done, unless yeah. somebody else has something else to discuss regarding these minutes. I think the statement of bare bones is good, and we're still, I would hope, proceeding along those lines. But the Chairman did say that the rules that we established by consensus, we didn't vote on any of them, would be reflected in the minutes. So I don't want to be in the middle of December budget discussions and having arguments because it's not in the minutes kind of thing. So I think this is an exception. We're just asking for bare bones, which she gave us, plus this additional information yeah, right. that Tim's requested. The rules that we agreed Please. to by consensus. Okay. So, so Barbara, just to be sure, stay with the the slim format, please. Okay, you don't need to do the expansive uh, minutes, but in this case, per this request, please just add those. Okay, thank you very much. Can, can I'm sorry. we get a sense of the committee on how they want the minutes? Why, sure. Just call for a discussion. I'll call for I, a I discussion. No how about Sonny? What would you like to add? Well, I had no problem with the way the minutes were written earlier, complete, including the votes and the, the discussions. Well, I know you didn't have any problem including the votes because we didn't have any votes except the vote to adjourn. Yeah, but I mean, the prior minutes, well, it's up to the committees. Well, the truth is that um, I know that in the past the Barbara spent a lot of time on the minutes, creating eight to ten page documents. Um, it's not necessary. That's all there is to it. Yeah. It's just well, she not necessary. Page the same whether she does a two page or a ten page. Yes, so. but it's not necessary. And as we get going, and there are two meetings a week, it yeah. probably would be. It's just going to. It's just not necessary. So I'm not requesting all right. that. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion regarding the minutes, David? Well, I think the answer to your question is because I'm also listening to Sonny, and we did a lot of voting last year, which I don't do anymore, but you did need that detail. I think what you have is what worked out well, what you just said, is the fact that we have the video as a backup. So if somebody remembers something was missed from the prior one, it was important that they could add it like Tim did, and that would save a lot of time to just bring up those special points. But no matter what, you always have the video. Mm. So I'm agreeing with you 100%, and I think that will solve the problem. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I want to mention that Tim, in the past, has taken a lot of time to, um, he slices up the videos, so that if you want to look at a specific thing, um, it's, it's kind of... I did not slice up that meeting. This past meeting? Right, and I don't tend to. Oh, okay. It wasn't that, it wasn't that noteworthy other than... Well, but in the future you may... Decide to still do I've that. I've sliced up, for example, the budget presentations to date on the Board of Selectmen's meetings, mm -hmm. which I intend to distribute to the budget committee members so they can look at it by topic mm -hmm. and hopefully reduce the amount of time we spend it, avoid redundant questions, for example. I think that's a very good thing. Is there a So I'm still, I'm still working to do that. So what, what, when it makes sense to slice it, I slice it. When it doesn't, I don't. Okay. I, I don't think last meeting 
it made sense to select so it is. And just for everybody's information, um, those those videos are available on YouTube, and I have found them to be very helpful because if you want to watch a specific thing, you don't have to watch the whole meeting. So um, thank you, Tim. All right. Any further discussion regarding minutes? Seeing none, we'll move on to review and discuss the proposed budget committee meeting schedule for 2017-2018. Uh, I worked with Christina to generate this schedule, and different department heads have been have looked at it. Um, I think it's workable. We have a couple of snow days built in just in case. So, and as you can see, um, I'm planning on November 9th to have the budget books prior to that, of course, so that everybody can take a look at them at home, and you can, and you can specifically look at the fire department, the police department, emergency management, animal control, and whatever non-petition money warrant out of, because they'll be at that point. Um, if you watch the selectmen's meeting two Mondays ago, they had the police and the fire department come in. Or actually, it was last Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last Thursday. They had the police and fire department come in, and it was interesting. Um, I, that, of course, there was their preliminary, preliminary presentation. Um, the selectmen have work to do on that still. And then if you watch last night, um, the DPW department was in, and that was a rather lengthy um, presentation. And if I think that using this schedule, and of course I will make sure that I send an agenda out um, 24 hours prior to each of these meetings, um, especially if something gets changed, so that you'll know exactly what it is we'll be talking about. So please take the time to look at the book ahead of time. If you've got things that you want to question, mark them in the book. Um, if you've got things that you perhaps, after we discussed, if you want to make a change, add more, uh, take away money, make the motion, and we'll vote on it right then and there. Okay? so. Anyway, any questions? Oh, yes, sir. I believe at our last meeting, uh, the point was made that it was important to review the operating budget after the current year closed, that is to say sometime early in January. <coughs> uh, but the calendar does not reflect that. It has it down for December 19. Um, I guess that was a, an error. That was an unintentional error, apparently. But uh, Yeah. I mean, the, the last um, couple of years we've been doing it in, in January specifically so we can see how all the spending took place in January and December as good, well as the entire year. That's a good point. I think December 19th is, is too soon. Mm. Yeah. Um, so the town operating final budget review, um, let's, let's move that out of December 19th. And we have... The only date is January 9th, it seems petition warrant articles deadline. Um, I think that usually, I know that's the deadline for petition warrant articles, but of course, most people get them in ahead of time. Last year was an exception, of course, as you well know. That was a quite an exception. But um, Okay, let's move that down to the January 9th, the, the final budget review and the petition warrant articles. Okay, that's a good idea. Thank you. Also, I see another challenge, which has been an ongoing challenge, but it's new because we had decided last month to only vote on line items. But the items here are not a one-to-one -one relationship to line items. Uh, so we're kind of like in a transition period here. And I'm not sure how that's going to be effectively managed. I'm not sure neither, Tim, and I hope that you'll help me uh, to figure it out as we go. Because uh, it's not necessary to vote every single line. It just It's just not necessary. So we'll... For example, we have assessing in here, and I'm looking at the budget. From, from last year? <coughs> yeah. And so I'm looking for assessing, and I don't see it anywhere. 
I assume it's stuck under executive, for example. Um, maybe probably. Elsewhere. Probably. Uh, probably. Uh, but the point is, it's, a, it, it's not a line item, it's a sub line item. But right. <laughs> well, in that case. It's just an example I pulled out. Yeah, it is. It is it's an example. And the thing is that, um, but it's nice to have Ed come in and, and be able to interview him and ask him questions. Oh, absolutely. Um, I just, you know. <laughs> just trying to align what we decided how we're going to proceed with, you know, uh, it may well, not we've got it in plan. Maybe there's going to be some problem there to try to. Well, we'll have to fold it in as we go, I suppose. There's always a few wrinkles here and there. Yes, right. Well, I think you know. maybe at least maybe when we go through it, we go through it like we always do and point out that this is actually part of a particular line item and mm -hmm. we will be voting on it when we complete it or something to that effect. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Um, and I have one other point that's different. Go ahead. Uh, I was watching, because uh, I watch all the selectors' meetings all year long. And at this time of year, I go through them all, and uh, <laughs> I noticed some rather interesting things with regard to our attorney. Uh, this is to say the legal department. And uh, I have also noticed there's been a lot of interest at the, at the VD. Uh, some people call it the precinct, so I call it VD, but it's actually the Hampton Beach Village District. Mm -hmm. At the Hampton Beach Village District, there was a presentation by uh, our selectman's rep, who was here tonight. But, uh, Regarding, so Regina, Regina, Regina Bonds, Bonds, yeah. yes. regarding the uh, uh, pending lawsuit, it hasn't been filed yet, from what I've heard. Um, and at a previous Board of Selectors meeting, she mentioned that all the work that our town attorney does is mostly controversial or confidential, <laughs> and they couldn't talk about it. And I imagine when he comes here, that a lot of that work is going to be topical. He's also increased his budget significantly. It was also increased during the year, I might add. Um, so I would suggest that maybe we may want to put aside time for a non-public session so we don't have to deal with confidentiality issues and we can all be enlightened and talk freely about everything relative to that legal department budget. So that's just a suggestion that we do in advance, let them know we'd like to do a non-public session on the legal department's budget. It seems that I remember from last year, I, I might be wrong, but um, it seems like there was a similar request last year. Is that true? No, it was, uh, it was, uh, no, it was two years ago when the selectman's rep pointed out that they were trying to increase the legal department's budget, and the reason was secret. And I stood up and said, we, do, we should go in the non-public concerned about it being okay and, and we shouldn't be voting on stuff on the basis that it's secret and it seems like we're kind of maybe getting to that place again I know that the budget didn't pass that possibly perhaps that for that reason uh, and I think the public would be well served if we went into non-public session and reviewed what's going on in the legal department it can come out knowledgeably and say it makes sense even if we may or may not agree with it uh, myself I am inclined to agree uh, with much of what's there, at least right now, but I'm not fully educated to say absolutely kind of thing, you know. So uh, that's what I think. Question. What makes you think he's going to disclose what the board of selectmen are doing in non -profit? Well, wait. See, the point, hold on, Sonny. Yeah. The, the thing is, the thing is that I know, I get the point, Tim, and we can ask. Right. That's all we can do. The, when it comes to a, I can't tell the lawyer what to do, the legal right. department what to do. We can't do. tell anyone we can what ask. to do. We cannot exactly. tell anyone what to do. Well, like, you know, it doesn't... <laughs> Nothing special about him. <laughs> right, exactly. But the thing, the, the point is that, the point is that we can ask... But he comes in here several times and says that we are his client. Okay. So, yeah, he should be able to speak to us in, in, in non-public, since we are his client by his own previous statements on, on the matter. Issue. I would say well, the issue is his budget. No. <laughs> the issue would be whether or not it was ethically and professionally appropriate for him to discuss. That's why I say we can ask, but it discuss what his budget. No, whatever you bring up when he comes. All this right. tonight is very premature. Right. Well, that's I'm rather have it now rather than at the heat of the moment. So I'm bringing it up now so that we can. But you can't anticipate the moment now. You don't know what <laughs> oh. the issues are going to be. Oh, okay. Right. So when the Hampton Beach Village District engages discussions on a potential lawsuit that hasn't been filed yet. You're saying you shouldn't have had it because you can't anticipate it. No, we did um, not have a professional ethical issue that we were talking about. Neither do I. 
He does. Well, how do you know? You were his representative? <laughs> Did you become his lawyer? Why don't we cut this out? This is so Yeah, let's cut it out. It's an absurd argument. Well, All I want to do is to have the opportunity for the Budget Committee to speak off camera and a non-public freely with the attorney, all right, so that we can have an understanding of what's going on without being concerned about confidentiality issues. We can come out of the non-public and do our normal public routine after that relative to his budget. It seems completely reasonable to me. I don't know why it's controversial to anybody. Well, my because question is, I've seen Mark present his budget proposal over a number of years, and this issue never came up. Yeah, it did, two years ago. Okay. Any other discussion? Steve, you had your hand up. Yeah, it's like everything. I mean, as a body, if we decide that that's the way we want to go, you know, Tim makes a motion and the whole body take a vote, because that's what we're here for. You know, we're one body. And then uh, if it votes and goes through, then we pass it on to... Well, so far we've been and, doing things by consensus. And then it would be up to... And I'm happy to go that to route come, if the right? chair wants to go that route. Well, no, that's, that's... And then if he wishes to come, fine. If he doesn't, then that's... that's just well, he'll, it, he'll, he'll come. He'll come to present his budget, of yeah, course. But, but, but he may not, for some legal... I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. For some legal reason, he may say, can't do that or, you know, won't do it or, or whatever. I don't well, know. in my opinion, it's in his interest. It's in the Board of Selectmen's interest that we do it that way because yeah. I think he'll garner more support in terms of well, what we'll, the Board of Selectmen's decisions have been made relative to that budget. I guess we'll see what happens. It's one of those, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, there. you know? Basically, that's Well, I'd like, like Chair to let them know that we'd like to cross that bridge. That's basically what I'm asking. I will, I will mention it. Okay. As long as that bridge sticks to only numbers and the budget and does not get into policies or procedures that are, are done by the selectmen and not the budget committee. Everything we do is that's about, good point. Everything we do is about numbers, and those numbers always and those are do, public. Those numbers always have to do with supporting a particular policy, right? No, not necessarily. Oh, but we spend money re without regard to policy. We mm. may. We oh. may not. But we cannot discuss the policy that we are doing because that's not I mean, ours this, to do. I, this is a broad statement. Absolutely. Which I fully disagree with. We don't spend a dime without there some, being some rationale behind it, and often that rationale is a policy. When you come in here and say, hey, look, it, give us a million dollars just because we want it. No rationale. And you're going to say, oh, we cannot discuss there just because we want it because that's policy. Mr. Chair, what happened to your yeah. three minute yeah. It's in the back <laughs> behind me. Okay. <laughs> it's in the back behind me. Are we done discussing this particular subject for the moment? Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Moving on to. Oh, we're still looking at the uh, the meeting schedule. Any other any other comments about the meeting schedule? I, I wish it wasn't like all jammed up like it is. This is kind of new. I, I know, think. and I will tell you. I don't know if it's because I thought I I had plenty of time to do this, and I actually started working with Christina two months ago. Um, but these were the dates that were available. There weren't as many dates available as, you know, that we could just pick and choose what we wanted. This is the, this is what was available. So we, that's the reason. Well, I'm that. just expressing my wish, and, and, and my wish is completely meaningless, of course. But uh, I think that we're going to find ourselves rushing through because of our tight schedule in December kind of thing. So well, I'm a little concerned about that. Well, and Tim, we do have the snow dates. And if we find that uh, we can't finish... We so, have those snow dates so, reserved. So if someone says we can't discuss something because we don't have time, you're going to say, yes, we do. We're going to invoke the snow date? Is that what you're saying? The snow dates are, are reserved for this budget committee. That's what I'm saying. So if we need <coughs> to use those dates, we will. Uh -huh. Okay. The question is, when, how is that need defined when, we, when people are, are not allowed to fully discuss things because we, we have a tight calendar? Well, I, I guess we're just going to have to try to make it work. I'll try to make it work, but I'm concerned about that, and I just want to raise that as a concern. Okay. I'm also you. noting the number of entries we have in here for so-called non-petition money warrant articles, which I assume means selectman warrant articles, selectman's money warrant articles. Yeah, if we, and again, if they're Are available you to anticipating us. anticipating warrant articles as early as November 9th? Mm -hmm. uh, Brian, did you? <laughs> <laughs> you answered for me. I... Was that a yes? About yes, final they're form. already talking about them, and they 
met at the Slotkin's meeting, and they, they are already last talking night. about yeah. the one on. Oh yeah, I know they're talking about it, but we don't usually we don't address them. historically it's, we haven't addressed them until we're in final well, form. Well, the other thing I have is in my years here. I've seen a much shorter schedule than this. Oh yeah, it's not. And it's we not made the worst it through. Of all time, no. We made it work. The it, it wasn't my suggestion. It was actually Christina's to yeah. put that wording in there. Okay. So if something is available to us, and we have the time, for instance, on November twenty first, first after the DPW. Um, right, so there's no additional presentation that would suggest that we'll have any Selectman's Warrant articles in their final form that early. No. Okay, thank you. This, is, this is our proposed, you know, there's no guarantees on anything, really. You know, I don't know that we're going to be... My next breath is not no, guaranteed, we're, right? We're you know, to, right. <laughs> who knows? Who knows what the, what's going to happen Keep praying, Bob. <laughs> 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 All right, any other... Are you only working groups? Well, exactly what the chair said. I mean, we have these extra snow dates, so if we come along and we're not getting the budgets presented to us in time, which has happened in the past, then mm -hmm. we can move on to another date and stay a little longer. But hey, I be clear. I'm not, I'm not stating any objections. Just to be clear. So, well done. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Right. Any other, uh, anything else on the uh, meeting schedule? Anybody? No? All right, let's go on to the next thing. Uh, since <laughs> Regina's not here tonight, we won't have a selectman update, um, but the next thing on the agenda is the village district report and update. Bob, please. Most of the season was expressed at our last meeting, but since our last meeting, we've had a an open posted meeting in, invited the business community, in particular, and the residents in general to express ideas for themes for next year, and we're kind of drilling down a little bit into that. Now it's a little premature to say where we'll end up. There were some interesting ideas, and I thought there was more engagement by the business people than I'd seen at some other times. And on a financial, financially potentially positive note, because the casino is going to be running shows into well into November, our parking lot revenue may not be as off as it might otherwise be done due to the weather problems of early spring and early summer. Thank you, Bob. Uh, how, much, how short is the <coughs> parking revenue from last year? We anticipate, in broad numbers, somewhere around 15000 it, it will probably end up, but we can't answer that question until the last show is closed in November. They're talking about going to electronic. And the town has been trying to yeah. We have not done yeah. Anything else, Bob? No. Thank you very much. Um, the school district update report, please, Ginny. Yes, you can pick up your school budget books on November 20th at the town office. They'll be done um, for our presentation, which will be on December 19th. Um, if you should look through your budget school budget book and you should have a question that you need immediate answer, call either Kathleen or Nathan. I'm sure they can help you along. Um, Trident is now sponsoring a Hampton Academy renovation and addition summary project summary sheet on the project and that's posted on our website so if you go on there you can see the sheet and you can see what's going on what's been done and what they anticipate being done and so that will keep people up to date and you can do that uh, SAU 90 redesigned their website over the summer it's a much user friendly um, website so please go on share again you have any questions or concerns give them a call and that's it Ginny, what was the date again that the book November 20th. 20th, okay. So the Monday before Thanksgiving. Okay, thank you. Monday before Thanksgiving. All right, very good. And where is your location on that date? I Usually it's the town office. Usually they bring them. But it may be, no, I would say go right down to the SAU office and pick yeah, it up. That's right, right on Scott Road. Yeah. Uh -huh. Right on Scott Road. 
directions. You know where Hannaford is? There Go straight go. by Hannaford. It's right there next the to the aquarium water. It's in the back. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Some of us might be inclined to go to a, a certain school, which, which is where we knew, normally go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But instead, it's Scott Road right, right. next to okay. Aquarium. Yeah. I would suggest that um, you go to the school board on Scott Road and pick, yep. pick it up yourself. Okay. And, and by getting it on November 20th, you'll have plenty of time to check it out before our um, December 19th meeting with the school board. Uh, the school board and the SAU 90 and their presentation. Thank you very much. Is that all, Jenny? Yep. Okay. So the next item on our agenda is other business. Now, I was contacted by a citizen and taxpayer of this town, um, and that person asked if I would read something that might be of interest to you. Um, <clears throat> so, is that the same thing that you mailed all of us? Perhaps, but the I'm going to read it for the public and for everybody here that may not have received it. Okay. Before starting a review of the requested 2018 town operating budget and money articles, you need to be aware of three facts that are beyond your control. These conditions will likely influence the voters next March. Okay, the first one. March 2002, town impact fees. Article 11 on March 2002 warrant passed by a vote of 1,864 to 612. And then in parentheses from the Warren article, it's not the entire article, just the part that um, impact fees shall be assessed to new development to compensate the town of Hampton for the proportional share of capital facilities generated by new development in the town of Hampton, including town-owned or operated facilities to be constructed or which were constructed in anticipation of new development. Close quotes. And then in parentheses, applies to the school projects as well. The school impact fees have been assessed. Um, continuing on, quote, impact fees shall be collected upon issuance of a building permit. Close quote. Now, from January 1st, hmm. 20. 2002 through December 31st, 2016, the Building Inspector's Office has documented construction value related to town projects and services totaling $496,154,327, <coughs> with not one penny contributed from fees that should have been imposed on developers. Minutes of the Planning Board on December 5th 2012, and then uh, colon, Mr. Welch and I were present to ask that the planning board set up and assess the fees that they were authorized to collect starting in 20, uh, 2002. The first three pages of their minutes on that date show Mr. Welch and I advocating that now it has been 10 years from the time the article <coughs> 11 gave them that authority. We said they need to step up and start impose, imposing development fees for town infrastructure needs. One member of that board said, quote, unquote, we will never tax developers. Mr. Welch explained that problems with the WWTP will need to be resolved and we will need to help to fund the improvements with a larger population and increased construction there is an increased demand for services. He also mentioned that should the WWTP reach 80% capacity, it would cost the town 60 to $100 million to replace that structure. Mm -hmm. The first three pages of the minutes of that meeting cover our presentation before the planning board. Now we are five more years away from that presentation, and DPW Director Chris Jacobs will be looking to you to support articles for approximately $41 million over the next few years to refurbish the plant with not $1 in revenues from impact fees to help alleviate the tax burden on the public. I can't begin to guess what the total impact fees, had they been assessed in 20, uh, 2002, would have generated while sitting in a town fund and earning interest. 
the second issue, solid waste. At Selectman's work sessions last fall, Mr. Welch said at the start that, quote, we are not getting anything done. All we do is pick up trash, close quote. A few things to consider. We are allowing public funds to be used to collect solid waste and recyclables for a great many of the businesses. This is an insult to private business owners who have always paid for removal of waste on their own properties while providing public funding through their taxes for other business owners' waste seven days a week in a six-month summer season. If the private businesses business trash continues to be collected by DPW, which will require more mechanical packers, more trailers, more carts, and a possible replacement of the transfer station, which was never built to accommodate the current volume of waste, you will see an increased number of no votes on annual, annual warrants. Finally, is it legal to divert public tax funds to support private business by providing free waste pickup? And number three, this is a short one. Shortfall in New Hampshire state reimbursement for services rendered. See Selectman Bean's presentations. I wish you a constructive budget season. Mary Louise Woolsey. Well, I, a little bit of a shout out there to Phil Bean and all his, uh, and, and the work that he's doing. I watched that meeting last night, and he, he has uh, quite a bit of stuff that he's working on um, regarding the state, and he's, he's doing quite a good job, I think, as a state rep. He's quite involved, spending a lot of time. So um, that's the end of that. Now, I do want to mention that uh, thank, I want to thank Mary Louise Woolsey for, for giving us these. But I, want to, I just want to re-mention what she said in the very first sentence, and that is, you need to be aware of three facts that are beyond your control. So they are not, we, just as we don't want any board any other board telling us what to do, we don't tell any other boards what to do, neither. Um, so, having said that, any discussion from anybody? By definition, facts are out of control since they're already facts. Thank you. <laughs> anybody else? Yeah. Uh, Sonny, go ahead. Yeah. I stopped in the DPW last week or the week before asking, aquarium is putting on Liberty Lane water system because it's a private system but they running the wastewater and the drinking water in the same so they're putting a new pipe in for the drinking water. I asked him who's paying for it. EPW says we're not paying for it. I asked the query who's paying for it. Oh he said the town will probably pay for it. I can't get an answer. It's a, probably a project that's over a million dollars or more. They're r running a water pipe all the way through Liberty Lane to get up to Tau Farm Road to connect. That's a, sounds to me that's an impact fee that should be. Well, again, Sonny, <coughs> that's not... Yeah, right. Well, it's that's, in line we're not, with this. We're not the planning board, okay? And so that's all it can be said about that. Okay. Well, we are the budget committee. We should be able to get the answer to his question. Who's paying for it? That's the question, right? Yeah. Well, the question is the town. I, the I received the answer from a query in the town. Right. Well, you're not getting an official answer. That's the problem. Right. I can't even find out how much it is. <laughs> so is there something we can do as a budget committee to get an official answer to that? Well, what seems like a basic question. Who's paying for it? Well, what I suspect is happening is that whoever's paying for it will get seek an abatement from the town and his property tax. I, I don't know for sure, but usually the way it works is that usually, having had experience with this, with water and sewer, is that when, say you build a house on a street and they have to there's no water and sewer in front yeah. of you okay so it's down the street the somewhere yeah. and you have to bring it up to your house yeah. you have to pay for it okay the town or other water company may install it but you pay for it then as other people hook up they have to give yeah, you I money understand. back that's the way it normally works now I don't know how it works with aquarium water 
I don't know how it works. But the issue I, would, here, I would imagine they're saying they're not going to pay for it, and the town saying they're not going to pay for it. I would have very much have to think that whoever's building that particular project, they're going to pay well, for it. Well, the point is it's a private system, so... It, In the private the system? It's a private system. It does not town. So. Well, whoever's putting this project in will have to pay for the, uh -huh. for the um, pipe. Okay? That's... I don't know that for a fact, but I, I, I would have to think that we'll that's... We'll try to find out, okay. Mm. May I ask a question? Are we going to yes. try to find out? Yes, I will try to find out, Sonny. Thank you. David? Just a general type question on this particular item. Let's pretend it cost a million dollars for the sake of the question, the statement. Let's pretend Aquarium says we're going to build a town. Pretend, okay? Let's say somebody in the town approves it. Pretend. Somebody in the office knows somebody and it gets done accidentally. Pretend. Wouldn't that money, if it was a million dollars, have to be allocated at one of our budgets in order for somebody to withdraw the money to pay the million? That's my question. And that's how it affects us as a budget committee, because we assure whatever it was for 2016 and what's going to be 2017 and 2018, Somebody's going to go take a million dollars from what approved budget we have. Somebody has to clarify that, and they hopefully won't be breaking the law in doing so. We'll, we'll really have a private session. Could you help me? With but that? remember, we approve a bottom line only budget. Okay. So in that, we approve of the bottom line. It's up to the selectmen to spend that bottom line how they see fit. That's fine as long as the money's there. As long as the money's there. If they take a million dollars and we're in a deficit, then. The selectmen are in trouble, and somebody's going to be—they're going to be held accountable. That was my question. Yeah, Thank you. they will be accountable. I, I will I make. I just want to clarify that statement. Okay, but wait, wait. Just to answer, I will make a phone call, mm -hmm. and I will find out who's paying for it. Simple as that. Period. Because I know just who to call. I'll take care of it. Okay. Will you? I'll take care of it. I'll have an answer for you. But would you, are you going to give us an answer at the next budget meeting? Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's how you'll get it. Thank okay? You. We, don't, we don't do emails anymore, remember? I didn't ask for an email. <laughs> You're not going to get one, it. neither. Uh, <laughs> not for me, anyway. Can you send Tim? a letter to the editor? Can I? Yeah. For what? For what? Disclosing that information instead of using email? No, I'm not going to do that. Okay. And I won't be sending an email neither. You'll find out at the next budget. I'm just asking you have at the next meeting. One, one last comment. Uh, Go ahead. When the town protested aquarium's rate increase recent last year, okay, it turned out that when they got the rate increase and it was reduced, aquarium billed the town for the legal costs. And did Defending. we end up paying the legal cost? Yeah. So, oh. yeah. No, the, the, the water rate payers paid it. Mm -hmm. Right, Sonny? The water rate payers paid it. The customers. Yeah, the customers. Right. right. Yeah. Not the taxpayers. It's a different classification. Was it my left pocket or my right pocket? <laughs> it was actually your back pocket. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> But on the rev on the impact fees, that should have been part of the town's revenue. That's right. For all those budget years, so if they didn't do it, why didn't we notice a big? I mean, if they predicted from the impact fees they were going to get a lot of money, and we they didn't, maybe. That's the question. I don't have an answer to, Jenny. Yeah, I don't and, know, Steve. And. And when Mary Louise was a selectman, she went with the town manager, as I just, you know, the story yeah. I just read, and you can see the results. I don't know why. I just don't know why. Okay. Uh, you have to. No, I'm sorry. One further comment. If you look at other towns, you'll find most of them are using impact fees as a source of revenue. Oh. I know that, well, wait. I know that the school assesses impact fees. Right? Yes. Okay? Is that yes. correct? Yes. Right. So that's a wonderful thing. The, the planning board just didn't do it. Didn't do it. So that's, you know, 
period. That's the answer. That's the short answer. Okay. Is there any way to talk to them that will stop no. collecting them? We can't no. talk about that at all. No, no. That's not the budget committee's place, and that's not going to happen. Okay. So we're not going to be trying to tell another board what to do. It's not, not going to happen. I'm telling you to tell the board what yeah. to do. I said, could you ask? I'm not them? even going to suggest it. No. It's not going to be discussed. Period. Okay. This is really getting into an area of policy. Exactly. And, and that's why. I don't know how it's not far gonna, down the street. We're not going to go down that street. Too far okay. Already. Yeah. We're not going to go down that street. Period. So this isn't the Board of Selectmen. This is the Budget Committee. And there are things that we'll do regarding the budget. Okay, and I know Tim, you're smiling because everything's related to the to dollars and cents. Okay, I know it's all related. It's like a big circle. Okay, but it is I our it now. is our job to to go over revenues and expenditures. So if we have to go over revenues and expenditures, but we don't know that this money is there or should be there. That presents a problem. If it was never assessed, let me assure you, there's no money there. The, the, that's Zero. true, Steve. But if it, it, I guess, I guess if it, it was there was a warrant article that passed, and if they're not enforcing it, then that is not our preview. That's the selectmen's preview. Well, quite frankly, quite frankly, when the legislative body votes on something, um, and they direct what should happen the legislative body, the voters of this town, then their wishes should be yeah. a command, yeah. okay? And, and, and the thing is, a few years ago, the state legislator had to actually come up with a rule that no means no, because, um, you know, legislative bodies would vote no, and then certain boards would just go ahead and do it anyway. Right. Now, has that happened? In the time that I've, th this is my fifth year on this board, and I've seen it happen more than once, um, that, you know, things are voted and then it just doesn't happen the way it's supposed to. Um, I'm not running the whole show. If I was, well, you'd see a lot of changes <laughs> real fast. But that's not the case. So, Tim, anything else, Ginny? No. Tim, you want but to I assume when such, such issues come up, they are the purview of the Budget Committee to discuss. Right, well, we're discussing it now. Right. So when the actual absolute instances occur, well, I mean, Tim, for instance, when we are afforded the opportunity to discuss it, Tim, I mean, when, we don't have the power to do anything about it. When we, if you look at that schedule, there's some place in there probably where we may be seeing somebody from the um, planning board. Right. You yeah. know, it seems to me that last year Brendan McNamara showed up yeah. at our meeting, and it would give you or anybody else here the opportunity to ask a direct question. That's is that something that you'd be interested in, David? Absolutely. Okay, see, so that can happen. Right. And yes, when they hear, you can ask them anything you want. It doesn't mean you're going to get an answer, <laughs> but no, I'll be very frank. It, you know, you can expect as an answer, yes, no, or I don't know. Or I'm Have not going to gonna tell you. Well, <laughs> I've read that too. Well, yes, you have. Yes, you have it. I can. That's there's truth in that. Um, but that's. Go ahead. You still want to? Yeah, I actually I got to my original point yet. <laughs> okay, continue. Um, it's my understanding that the town voters voted to grant the authority for these fees. Granted that authority to the planning board. And the planning board has exercised that authority by doing nothing. It appears that way. So the voters have not been ignored on this on this vote. So that's that's because I heard someone say the voters were kind of like ignored a little bit, maybe here, and they were not ignored. All right. The voters gave the planning the planning board the opportunity or the authority to do something, and they chose not to do it. Right. So that's not an ignoring of the voters. They're simply acknowledgement of their authority, which they were not going to exercise. I think that explains it very thoroughly. Um, also, I think there are some questions that, that we've been having about the red presentation, which I think the public and the budget committee would have been better served if the person who authored it were here to answer these questions rather than us speculating on what the answers are. 
I chose and, I chose not to have that happen. I, I chose not to have that I saw an email person on. That topic, on yeah. Well, I didn't I didn't send an email out. It no, was she did. Yes, and I chose not to put it on the agenda. Yeah. Okay, so and yeah. as chairman, that's my prerogative. Well, so there's there's where you and I are not going to be agreeing because in the past uh, we have said that it's a committee decision to allow or disallow someone from speaking. Uh, at, who wishes to speak, and I do believe uh, that we have not yielded that in any fashion. That it's a historic precedent that we follow that procedure. That if some member of the public, a stakeholder in the town of Hampton, has some substantive things to say about money in the town of Hampton relative to the government, that is, and they wish to speak to the budget committee, that it's the budget committee's decision, not any one individual to make that decision of whether or not we can afford them that opportunity. And so I would, I would like to, uh, you know, acknowledge that. It's really up to the Budget Committee to accept or reject such requests. I don't object to you saying, okay, come on in because we have the time as, as an individual because that's like, okay, fine, you know, we can listen to them and that's it. But to simply deny a person who's requesting to come in without the committee as a whole considering it, I think is, um, an excessive exercise of, of authority. Anyone else? Yeah. I, it occurs to me, you know, we represent the taxpayers. The budget, the Board of Selectmen job is to hire the town manager and department heads, and they get their, their leadership from the, from the town of people that have been hired. It occurs to me, I think we would be well served if we had invited the public to come to these meetings with their concerns, because we're really representing the public here. Yeah. Well, Sonny, that isn't the uh, format that we followed in the past. No, I, I know that I'm we had sorry. one speaker come in here a couple of years ago, and if you look at the record, you'll see that I voted against that. I was not for that at the time, and as the chairman of this committee, I do have some responsibilities. Um, as Tim rightly pointed out, the state, the RSA, RSA is, it, is it 32 or 40 ones, the ones that have to do with the budget committee, 32, 32 require that the this board elects, this committee elects a chair, not a vice chair, but a chair. And I've been elected, and as long as I'm the chair, there are going to be some rules that I'm going to enforce, okay? And it's not going to be the, the, the committee is I'm open to hearing everybody out, but this agenda, I'm not giving up my authority of making the agenda. I make the agenda, and that's that's uh, final. That's all there is to it. was okay. to put on the agenda uh, an opportunity for the public to speak. Yeah, I'm not going okay. to do that. All right. Okay. And it, when we get into this, uh, into the next meeting, in the meetings after that, there won't be time for any of that. Okay, so anybody else? So what you're not saying, I assume, is that this committee still retains the right to overrule your decisions on such matters. Is that correct? Tim, I make the agenda and I won't put a speaker on the agenda. I understand. Okay. That's not my question. So that's my question that's is, the answer. When you make decisions that the body as a whole does not agree with, does the body still have the authority to overrule? Of course. Or do you rule without any check. Oh, there's, there's a check, Tim, and the check would be that you can at any time you want, anybody on this board, mm -hmm. you can elect a new chair, you see, and if it gets a second and it gets a majority, then you'll have a new chair. Uh -huh. Okay, that's the check, I guess. Okay, so if you, if you need that as an answer, that would be the answer. So effectively, you're saying is it your way or the Nyan Highway? Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not gonna. St I'm not going down that. Did you say nine? Nine, yeah. Yeah. I'll, yeah. If I don't get my way, I'm I'm resigning, and you're gonna have to go find someone else. Because this ain't fair. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna answer that, Tim. Well, you don't okay. have to. It wasn't a question. It was a statement. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah, I guess Steve. my thoughts are, uh, and I understand you're the chair, but if there is somebody that's coming in that's a, a taxpayer that has something that's pertinent to uh, whatever we're discussing, you know certain budget or something, and they can add some light to something. 
then I think it still should be open to the body to, you know, you present it to us and we make a, you know, have a discussion. Maybe we take a vote on it and decide whether that's good. I mean, what do we have time along the way? But there's going to be people out there. I mean, the taxpayers are the ones who will put us in here. We are out here to protect the taxpayers and look over the funds and whatever. But I still think there could be an opportunity one time along the line or a couple times, because even last year we had somebody come in. And if somebody wants to discuss something that's pertinent to what we're talking about, a budget, not anything other than that, then we should have given the affordability to do it. And just to have a closed door shop, like you saying, well, it's all Well, it wasn't, discussion. it actually we wasn't closed door, you see, because I had a conversation with that person, and this was Yeah, you're talking solution. in this situation, I right. understand that. But I'm saying if in the future there's something, somebody comes to you and says, hey, I have something I really want to discuss, it's pertinent towards the public works or towards any of the budgets, right? Well, I think we should probably let them, let them come in, and if we have the time, we have the affordability, we should allow them to come in and talk. They, after all, they are the taxpayers, and they are the people that put us in here. Mm -hmm. That's well, all. I'll have to, um, we'll see how that I mean, goes. Look at it as it goes. Right. We have to look at we'll it as it goes. We'll see how it goes. I think we can't have a closed shop. We do have to have kind of an open shop. But during well, the budget season, you indeed give the public a chance. You have a public review. Well, the truth yeah, is, the truth is that, that, hold on, hold on, Sonny, Sonny. I had a conversation with the person. This was judged as the best, You're fine. the best thing. Okay, and I didn't, I didn't say no. I'm not going to read. I read every word of what was submitted to me, and I did um, disclaim it, so to speak. Is that it's beyond our control? They're just facts. Okay, so I spent the time with that. Um, so it, it isn't a. Um, It was a compromise, and that seemed to me, in this case, to be the best solution. And both parties agreed. Okay, the person uh, Mary Louise agreed with this, and I thought it was a good compromise as well. I asked her to be succinct, which she was, and I think that um, that was a good solution in this case. Okay, so that was my decision. And you, you're perfectly. Um, legal to do that, Steve. Right. Chairman, right. set the agenda and set the tone of the meeting. Well, and so that's that's that. I don't have any more to say about it. Anybody else? Yeah, the only thing I would add well, is that this person has presented a point of view at this meeting, and I would say a compromise going forward would be got somebody present something in writing to the chair that could be read at the meeting. Uh, otherwise, there's a risk of this is going to get sidetracked from his primary function, which is to consume a tremendous amount of time in dealing with the department heads and the people who've come before the committee. I think that, I think, Bob, you know exactly why I did it this, oh. this way, and I thought this was fair. It was a compromise. Mary Louise thought it was fair as well, and so... Um, it's that was my solution. Okay. I think it's a fine solution. Okay, thank you. Hold on, Sonny, Sonny, wait, wait, wait. Let Brian speak. He hasn't um, spoken yet on this. First off, I agree with you totally. Um, secondly, on the, this business, I wanted to let you know that I will be attending the 23rd at a CIP committee. Yes. I think you were copied on email. If not, I'll forward it to you. But if you would, please, Brian, because the you're on that committee. Yeah, I think it's essential that we have a copy of the CIP updated plan. It's just essential. We haven't to got budget. the updated plan yet. Right. But this is more to do with schools. Yes, I think that's it's essential that we get that. As well, I'm going to reach out to Chris Jacobs. I don't know if anybody watched the selectmen's meeting last yeah. night, but he had a report that um, was prepared and given to each of the select selectmen and um, regarding the, the wastewater treatment plant. I think that that's something that if we can get each one of us get a copy of that and read through it, um, Regina said that you know, you may not want to read all 300 pages, but the beginning of it um, had a, a sort of an executive summary, and I think that that's something that um, that we need to have for information as well. Yeah. 
I just haven't gotten a final date on the actual CIP committee, okay. but this is more to do with the school. Okay. Please keep us informed on that, Brian. Yeah. I will. Okay. Yeah. Sonny? Actually, Brian, if you recall, I, I served as an author on that. Mm -hmm. Tracy never notifies me, so why don't you raise it with me? Okay. I'll send, you know, I'll send it to everybody. Yeah. So you have it. Yes, and as a matter of fact, Brian, I'm going to make sure that I put that on next month's agenda to just check with you to see where we are with it, okay? So, thank you very much, Brian. No problem. CIP. Okay. Anybody else have any other business tonight, Mr. Jones? Just to be clear, I do not object to you and the requester of Mary Louise coming to an agreement on this presentation. What bothered me was receiving an email from Mary Louise indicating that you denied the request. Apparently that happened prior to you coming to a compromise. Okay. And I wanted a quick clarification that um, based on recent past, it has been this committee's practice to take a vote on that, and that is being changed, and you put forth the the uh, boundaries that you are going to dictate on that question, so that puts it to rest. But I wanted to be clear as to where I was coming from on that. As a kind of a dovetail issue on that relative to the uh, water treatment plant, very complex uh, facility mm -hmm. uh, requiring a degree of expertise that I don't think we really have here. Um, however, as you know, there was a form, there is a former selectman who actually got his hands dirty working on that some years ago and fixing a lot of issues. Okay. And I think he would be very valuable, as we say, expert witness to come in and help us out with that should that matter come before us. And so I'm hoping that this more recent decision won't impact the ability to make that happen. I think you know I'm talking about Jerry Zanoy. I know exactly who you're talking so about. I think he would be very useful to, you know, as an expert on the matter. Uh, to uh, to educate us, um, and so I hope you would entertain that possibility. Thank you, Tim. I'll take that under advisement. Thank you. Okay. Any other? Yeah, one Sonny, yeah. you have a lot of business tonight. I can't help. Go ahead, uh, Tim. When you, if you recall, last year we had a 91A request. When you say you received an email, you're opening it up to. A 91A nonsense you again. So. No, we're not because the this, email email, this email did not come from a committee member. It came from a member of public. And as you may recall in our discussions with the attorney and, and board of selectmen, emails from a constituent cannot be part of a 91A request. Because that was one of the objections I raised because they were asking for everything under the sun. And they did yield on that point that constituents are free to email any one of us without being concerned about some yeah. one invoking 91A to reveal their private thoughts they care to share to a public yeah. official. But I mean, when you share it with the world, you're... you're I am not. I didn't that's, share that's, it with the world. Uh, no, he did. And it's a good point, but I want to, I want to, I'm glad you mentioned this, Sonny. Brian, when you send that CIP report to me, do not send it to everybody. Send it to me, and then I will have it sent to the board. Or just send it to me, and I'll put it up in the way for everybody. Yep. If you would, I'll just send it to you. Because, because I have, um, I have Christina yes. that will do that for me. And that way it alleviates any problems with any 91A problems. Right. Okay. So, so thank you very much. Okay. Any other um, any other old business? Do you plan on having any old, other business at all? Do you plan on having other business on all agendas subsequent? Um, probably not, Tim. I would love to see it there. Old business slash new business. You call it other business. That's fine. I think there ought to be some room for us to you know say well this is something okay. I want to talk about kind of thing. I'd love to see it there. All right, that's okay. my feedback. That's a good point, and I will make sure that it's there. And with so that, I'm happy to be the, for the first time in my history to make a motion to adjourn. Do well, I have a second? second. Sonny seconded. <laughs> it's the first time it is for you second anything, Mike. Okay. <laughs> uh, all those in favor? Unanimous. Adjourn at 8.06 p.m. Thank you very much, Channel 22. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much.